this time I'll call this regularly scheduled meeting of the Harlington City Commission, which has been duly <coughs> posted to order. And I'd like to call upon uh, Bill Reagan to lead us in an invocation tonight. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioners, it's been a hard week in the United States of America. Maybe not to the same degree, but a hard couple of months here in Harlingen. I'd like to offer to you, for your consideration, council members and members of the community, a few words from the prophet Hosea, who lived about 700 years before Jesus was born. And then a prayer. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us but he will bind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us, that we may live in his presence. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge him. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. And although we may not feel this way about rain right now, generally we do as people in Palestine do, he will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. We pray. Heavenly Father, God of all creation, we ask you to hear the prayers of your servants who cry out to you today. Regard the sorrow of the loved ones of those who were killed this past weekend in El Paso and Dayton. Give them comfort in this their day of anguish. Remember your people across this nation. We are troubled by recent events. Give us hearts to remember the victims and their loved ones so that we may not allow these tragedies and crimes to be the occasion for bitterness and strife among us. We pray protect our community from the horror of violence. Protect and defend those who step into harm's way to protect and defend us, the men and women of our police and fire departments. Heavenly Father, many in our community are suffering as a result of recent flooding in our city. There have been great losses. Many are tired. Some have despaired. Remind them of your unfailing love. And teach us to support and help one another in these difficult times. And tonight we ask for wisdom for our leaders here before us and for the community joined together in this room. There are important decisions to be made. Guide us to do what is right. We thank you for our leaders and ask you to give them wisdom. We thank you for this great community and ask your blessing upon us. Forgive us our sins and teach us to love one another. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Well, welcome, everyone, tonight. Glad to have you here. First thing we have to, going to do is uh, the presentation of a recognition plaque to the members of our <coughs> Arlington Community Emergency Response Team. So if those of you who are uh, members of the Community Emergency Response Team are here, please come on up. We want to recognize you. Community response uh, team has been operating for over seven years and consists of over 40 active members from Harlem to the area. And they are citizens of the community that have a common interest in helping the public in improvement projects as well as assistance during and after a disaster. So we want to recognize them, especially for their hard work in the last few weeks and uh, for the work that they have gendered throughout our communities to uh, help those in of need. And so this plaque says, uh, this is a community service report for the community emergency response team for your dedication and contributions to the Harlington citizens and in appreciation for your extraordinary <coughs> kindness and commitment in helping citizens during and after a disaster and other city improvement projects for the common good of the people presented on this day. Seventh day of August 2019. Thank you. Congratulations. 
go ahead. Uh, I just want to say thanks uh, for giving me the opportunity, giving us the opportunity to be here. Uh, I got to thank Janie Sines and Daryl Loftus, uh, Deputy Chief of Fire Chief Daryl Loftus. They got us started about 10 years ago. Got a proclamation the City Council, and uh, since then, the City Council and the citizens have been absolutely fantastic. <laughs> and we appreciate your support. All right. Thank, thank you all, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of May 15, 2019 and the special meeting of July 2, 2019. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, the minutes are approved. Consent agenda items 3A through H. Is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda? So moved, Mayor. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, by side. Motion carries. Item 4 is the consideration of possible action to authorize the city manager to accept the Texas Division of Emergency Management subgrant for the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program under award identification number 4266-014 and provide the matching funds for phase two of the 9th and 13th Street Drainage Improvement Project System 005. Carlos. Mayor, Commissioners, good afternoon. Uh, in our uh, ongoing efforts to I guess leverage our uh, city funds <clears throat> to do drainage improvement projects throughout the city. Um, we've uh, solicited a grant from the uh, Texas Department of Emergency Management <clears throat> uh, who administers uh, FEMA grants. Uh, as you all know, last year, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, you all uh, approved the matching funds for the phase one, which was the uh, the hydraulic analysis, engineering design of this uh, project. Uh, this project, as you may recall, runs uh, to provide drainage relief to the areas of uh, 9th and 13th Street. Uh, and then it goes uh, south towards uh, Pierce Road. Uh, and then it, it discharges into the system that uh, takes that water to the uh, Arroyo Colorado. Uh, we have... Uh, received notification from FEMA, or TDEM in this case, that we are eligible to move on to phase two. Uh, now, the, the phase two is the construction portion of, of, the, of this project. Unfortunately, though, the, uh, the cost estimate for this project has uh, increased primarily because of the, uh, the, the uh, through the hydraulic analysis, the design, <clears throat> the engineers have identified that the uh, drainage system needs to be increased further than what we had in our initial estimate or, or uh, propose, uh, proposals. The uh, current project cost for the entire uh, project is $2,734,948.50. Uh, <coughs> FEMA, in this case, uh, is limited to funding the project only for a million dollars, a million two hundred and four dollars, and I'm sorry, a million two hundred and four thousand seven hundred and fifteen dollars, uh, which leaves the, the remaining balance uh, for the city to, to cover, which is approximately 53% of the total project cost. Uh, that's at a million six hundred and fifty six thousand eighty seven dollars and fifty cents. Uh, so we come before you to uh, give us authorization to move forward to uh, uh, for phase two <clears throat> and submit a uh, notification to FEMA that uh, you all as a body have elected to uh, uh, commit funding uh, for, for, the, uh, for this project or phase two in this project. Mayor, Commissioner, this is one of the projects that we had submitted several months ago. We've been waiting to hear from TDEM on whether or not we, we were granted the the funds and we heard from him last week and so we are ready to move forward with phase two it is over a 50 percent match but anytime you can leverage that kind of money um, i would highly recommend that we move forward with this project it will help a large area of our downtown and our residential area by Lancy hill so um 
staff is recommending that we move forward and execute the agreement with the Texas Department of Emergency Management. And Carlos, uh, what's our out-of-pocket cost? Um, uh, one million six hundred and fifty-six thousand eighty-seven dollars and fifty cents. Okay. And, and now, what, now, what should of our out-of-pocket be based on the original submission? It would have been just over three hundred thousand dollars, Carlos. The one point five. Yeah, it was uh, the initial cost estimate was about one point three million. Correct. Uh, so twenty twenty-five percent of that was uh, had written down four hundred. Yeah. 400, and so, yeah. and bear in mind that any overages during construction, sometimes you encounter uh, conflicts with other lines, um, will be the responsibility of the city as well. Now, if I may add, Please. the uh, the project. Uh, goes or, or traverses Tyler Avenue, <coughs> both uh, lines uh, cross Tyler. The, uh, the cost estimate, part of the cost increase is that the, uh, the engineer assume or is assuming that Texas would not allow us to open cut uh, the roadway. Uh, we, the, the project uh, calls for boring the line and we're talking about a 48 inch concrete diameter pipe. And so that's an expensive proposition. We potentially can see some savings off, uh, from that if we can convince Tex not to give us a permit and, uh, and do those, those improvements that way. <clears throat> now, where is Tyler on this drawing? Because I can't read the street names. <coughs> give me a second. I don't see it. Because what would be to our right? What's that? Is that the expressway? No, sir. Um, no, wait. Okay, so north is on the left. North yeah, is on so the north, left. Correct. That's, uh, that's going to be commerce. That's commerce. Right here. Okay. Um, the next question and on so your drawing. So this is uh, 9th Street. This okay. is 13th Street. Okay. <laughs> on your drawing there, you show phase one, phase two, phase three. But you were only talking phase two. Is there a phase three we, no, we're not talking about? Uh, what those phases refer to is construction phases, uh, meaning that the contractor will start at the at the outfall point, then work himself in, in this direction. Uh, it, it doesn't pertain to the phase of the uh, grant uh, application. So we're going to be taking care of both 9th and 13th <coughs> yes, to, to the point where it outfalls outside of the city limits? No, no, no. This uh, out, out falls into the system that uh, goes into uh, the uh, Arroyo Colorado. Okay. <clears throat> it conveys the water to the Arroyo just, uh, just beyond Taft Street. Okay. I was trying to figure out where, what the lay of the land was here. Okay. So this one gives you a little bit of a better description. Past this Little Creek and Greenway. That's correct. It, it, uh, this is the Arroyo Colorado where it outfalls Commerce uh, Business Center 7. Uh, irrigation Canal. Uh, so, Tyler is going to do this. Uh, I apologize, it doesn't. It's okay, and we don't see it because it goes underneath Tyler. Uh, the drain line? Yeah. Yes, it's, it's an existing pipe that's underground. Underground. It's, it's a storm sewer line. It's not an open, open ditch. Correct. Okay, so uh, during the um, meetings post flood, it was revealed that we have to spend $16 million on drainage. Was this one of those items included in that list? Um, yes, sir, but it wasn't at that amount. Uh, okay. Again, because we just got a notification okay. back from FEMA. So our 16 is now like 17 million we have to spend. 17.2 mm -hmm. or something. Yes. And Dan, we're going to pay this by? <coughs> we're going to put it in next year's budget, Commissioner. We're going to put it in next year's budget. So I'm going to present uh, next year's budget here in other two items. And uh, we had to make changes to accommodate uh, for some drainage projects. And so you want us to give you a, an authorization without looking at the budget? I would like you to give me an authorization without looking at the budget, absolutely. This is 50 cents on the dollar to do a drainage project, and I highly recommend that we do this. So you're saying drainage is important? 
I am saying drainage is important, as it has been for many years. I've been working on drainage for a long time in this city. And the uh, 2008 drainage study still has over $50 million for the drainage improvements. We have a plan. We have been identifying funding we're, sources. Yeah. And so we just need to keep going. We have, you know, we, we're going we're, we're gonna to have to. We're going to have to use fund balance. Yes, sir. You'll see here in a few minutes. And, and you, but you, we, we've we've known that that we're going to have to use fund balance as we uh, get some as we're successful. And so I congratulate the staff for uh, making this happen for us because that's another 1.2 million dollars that we can leverage. But also means that over the last 10 years, this will bring our with this. $2.7 million project brings our total investment uh, towards our master drainage plan to uh, a little over $16 million, $16.5 million uh, just, just with this one. We're going to talk about some more in a few minutes and the ones that we hope uh, that we'll be able to get. But this is a huge, uh, uh, I, I'm, so, I'm so pleased that we're able to announce this so quickly after uh, you know what we got, what we went through a couple of months ago, a month and a half ago, and and to, and to be able to uh, recognize the fact that the staff's been working on this, this this one project. So it's going to be a large project. It's going to be a, make an make a, a, a significant impact. I think we're all committed, uh, as we have been, uh, to not only uh, to, to following our master drainage plan. This is in the master drainage plan. This is in plan. the yes, sir. Following master drainage plan, getting these projects uh, done as as we can. But this really steps up our end of the commitment uh, because we're we're having to we're having to. It's more than what we had anticipated what it was going to cost. But it's uh, I think it's a huge uh, step. And uh, for us to move forward in the, in the and to follow our master drainage plan, and I, I really congratulate uh, uh, Carlos and Dan and the entire staff for uh, for getting the award because it's very competitive to get these uh, awards from uh, FEMA and from the Texas Department <coughs> of, of Emergency uh, <laughs> Services. So I would hope that the commission would agree. To accept the $1.2 million grant. And that being said, I'd like to make the motion that we accept that grant. <laughs> yeah, I have a real quick question. Yes. Just um, uh, you said a we were over budget by was it twice as much? Or so the original estimate was 1.3 uh, or 1.5. It was more uh, 1.4. Actually, it's 1.5. A million five hundred forty-seven thousand nine eighty-seven. That we underestimated. No, that was the original estimate. The that current estimate is two point seven. So what's the difference again? One point two. Okay, I when I'm I kind of echo what Commissioner uh, Leon said is I'm worried about not seeing the budget and then having the same mistake happen again. Like how do, how did we fall? I know that there's sometimes you you find. Uh, uh, I guess mis not mistakes, but uh, you run into problems during construction. But for it to be, you know, how so, how, we, how do I know or how are we going to know that that's not going to happen again before seeing well, that budget? Well, no, I think when Jane, the scope of work changed, right? That I understood correctly. That's correct. The scope correct. of work is more extensive than and what they originally bid. Yes, sir. That, that's the over the 1.2. It's not for change work. And, or anything like that. and for, for that reason, uh, FEMA and TDEM, Texas Department of Emergency Management, allows us to do this, uh, the analysis, the analy analytical part, uh, hydraulic studies and whatnot, in, in phases, meaning that they want to make sure that the, the uh, budgeted amount for the construction is, is appropriate, which takes a deeper uh, analysis, uh, which is what the engineering consultant, in this case, Tetsi, did. Okay. The yeah. initial uh, S, uh, the initial uh, proposal when we submitted the, the plans called for upgrading existing pipes out there. And, and again, this is upgrading existing pipes that are either 18 or 24 inches. Uh, our proposal was to increase those to uh, 30s, uh, 48s. Uh, having done the, the hydraulic analysis, uh, uh, Tetsi came back and the, all these lines that are running north-south, uh, are being increased to uh, uh, 48 inch pipes. 
in the uh, joint section right here, that's a, uh, a 72 inch diameter pipe. So initially they, so had, they had said we needed a, a certain size. Well, that was our, our analysis in-house uh, without the benefit of doing a hydraulic uh, heck rat study. And, uh, and is there a reason why they didn't do that before or they just, we didn't? Well, either. Uh, that was the first part of the grant, they, yeah. they, right? We got, we so, got so phase the one. part of phase one. The we got part of the phase we, one is, got, was, yes. And we put, and they put in their match, we put in our match, and we did the hydraulic study. Well, that was $125,000 and so. Right. Just just to find out what the hydraulics was was one twenty five. And and the staff based uh, the initial application on the master drainage study. That's an excerpt from the master drainage study itself, um, and what the the engineer that conducted that study in two thousand eight had recommended. Right. Now we did phase one to determine if that was still. We've done some other drainage projects, and sometimes when you do drainage projects, you move water from one area to another. And so um, the phase one was to study that system again and determine if we were still on point. It came back that we needed to increase the size and change the scope of work. That changed the cost. Um, is there some possibility, like Carlos was talking about, to open cut Tyler? May be a possibility. It's a long shot because that's a very busy roadway. It's a state roadway. Uh, I don't know that we'll be able to. So right now, the estimate stands at 2.7. And 2.7, 2.7 million, does not include any conflicts that may come up after we open some of these roadways, uh, which has happened in the past. And so the city would also be responsible for those costs as well. But again, we're, we're, this is a $1.2 million grant for drainage, and um, they're very competitive, and they don't come around very often. We applied for this grant, what, six, eight months ago? Uh, well, we before that we've applied for it uh, two rounds in 2016, 2017, no, yes. 2018 and 2019. So they're very competitive, and um, you know, the fact that we can get 1.2 million to do a drainage project, I think we should take advantage of it. Well, I made my motion. I, I did the second. We have a motion All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. As opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item five, consideration of possible action to approve a three-year, I mean, a three-party interlocal agreement between the City of Harlingen, Harlingen Irrigation District Number One, and Cameron County Drainage District Number Five to collaborate in a project to improve the conveyance of stormwater along 13th Street Drainage Ditch and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement. Um, <coughs> mayor, commissioners, this is another project that was identified through the 2008 Master Drainage Plan. Uh, we have been uh, uh, submitted applications for uh, grant funding through FEMA or TDM several times. Uh, the urgent need of this project uh, uh, brought us to the table with both the drainage district number five, Cameron County drainage district number five, and the uh, uh, Harlington Irrigation uh, Harlington Irrigation district, district number one. one. Uh, to collaborate in, in, in this project. I say collaborate because part of the, the system is inside city limits, part of it is outside uh, in the county area. And so, but it, uh, the system uh, again goes from uh, the southern point along 13th Street on Mats and it goes north approximately uh, uh, 8,800 linear feet north uh, past Amistad Road and then it outfalls into the north main drain. This is a, the main drain or canal that uh, is operated, owned and operated by the drainage district number five. The section north of uh, Loop 499 is also maintained by the uh, drainage district number five. So we've come to uh, an understanding at this point because again, this interlocal agreement is still needs to be uh, ratified by both boards, uh, the irrigation district and the drainage district. The agreement that we have uh, verbally at this point is for uh, both drainage district and the city of Harlingen uh, uh, contributing uh, monetarily to the uh, excavation and 
increase of a, a, of a box culvert that's uh, located on the southern portion, which is inside city limits uh, in the area of Matt's, Matt's Road. Uh, and the, the, the savings we're going to realize in this project is based on that the irrigation district is going to do the excavation. Um, the agreement states that they'll charge us at uh, $2 per cubic yard. Uh, for the uh, excavation and hauling of the uh, of the dirt that needs to be um, uh, pulled out, on the excavation side, we're looking at approximately forty-five thousand uh, cubic yards of, of fill that need to be done. Um, the uh, in your packet or uh, printout is the uh, cost breakdown uh, share. Uh, And I need to get my notes. <clears throat> the proposal again is uh, for that section south of Loop 499 to be paid for. The excavation be done by the irrigation district at a cost of uh, one hundred thousand five hundred and fifty dollars. And that section north of Loop 499. <coughs> up to the off-fall point would be 56,824 that part to be paid by the, uh, by the drainage district uh, number five. Uh, staff's recommending uh, in consideration and approval. So the uh, drainage district is providing roughly 33 percent of the cost of uh, this project? Yes, yes sir. And again the, the, the heavy part of the uh, on our portion is the installation of that uh, Seven by seven yeah, uh, box. concrete box, which yeah. alone is fifty-seven thousand dollars. Carlos, what, what would the improvements include? What would that do to the thirteenth Street drainage district? So, again, the uh, the improvements here will add some relief, or will relieve some of the uh, flooding issues that we've seen over the past. South of Loop Four Ninety Nine, uh, the areas to the uh, east, uh, the uh, Gabriel's uh, Landing. Uh, uh, Street uh, area uh, will be will see some relief, being that the uh, the canal when you widen the reprofile the canal, the water surface elevations in the canal will drop, uh, and also the the uh, maintenance and uh, excavation as it goes north uh, will expedite also that flow of of uh, water to get out of that that property or out of this area here. Uh, <laughs> So we'll, we'll see some, some improvements and some relief in, in the, I guess, the uh, frequency of water storing and backing up into the system on these subdivisions that are located uh, both in the, uh, between Loop 499 and uh, uh, Vincent, and then also south of Vincent uh, in this area right here. And in June, was there some damage to property? In this area, uh, yes, sir. My understanding is that there were several homes that saw some sort of uh, uh, water damage. Uh, mm -hmm. The amount of standing water wasn't. Uh, uh, it was prolonged. severe enough. It was, yeah, it wasn't <laughs> prolonged, Actually, but at, it, it at, did. At Adams Crossing uh, area, those three streets at the end have been affected the last <laughs> three times in the last thirteen months, and. Uh, by the rain, by the by the, by the rains we had in June of eighteen, there was another rain I think in September, and then and then this one, and so they need, so they're they're clearly uh, being affected even even outside of the you know the the <coughs> catastrophic catastrophic event that we had in June. So this is again another one of the projects that's on the uh, that's in, in the master drainage plan. That we've been planning to do and that we'd applied for a grant for but <coughs> thinking outside the box a little bit again i want to congratulate carlos and dan and the staff for uh exploring the opportunity to partner with uh the irrigation district which you don't really think of as, as a drainage partner but the irrigation district and the drain drainage district number five uh to be able to do this uh, project at really a, at, a, at a very reasonable cost uh, but it needs the project needs to be done and it's a really good project for uh, that area of town and, and once completed these improvements will be complemented by 
two additional detention ponds. They're going to, that drainage district number five, is, it, they're working on one already, and they plan to start another one within, within the next six to nine months. Um, not, not 69 months, six to nine months. Um, and so, so all those will complement what we're planning to do with this drainage ditch, and um, this is something that will provide some relief. Okay, the, uh, again, we, if I may real quick, uh, the applications that have been submitted, our cost estimate to FEMA uh, is in the realm of $1.3 million. Uh, with the uh, doing it in-house, you could say, uh, with the local uh, teaming, teaming up with the agencies, we're doing it at a tenth of a cost. So. Right. We're doing it for 100000 not $1.2 million. Yes, yes. Okay. A couple of questions. On your drawing, I noticed that you have existing and proposed structures. Are those uh, new crossovers? Because I noticed you have a 7x7 seven seven box down mats. Yes, sir. <coughs> is, that, is that what that represents? That's a proposed location for that 7x7 seven seven box. Okay. So, and the other two, are they sufficient once we uh, deepen and widen? Um, the master plan did not identify them as a needing, needing to be updated or increase in size. And so, uh, uh, in my opinion, it's, it, it, would be, it would suffice. Especially, again, the, the master plan did not identify this as an RDF placement uh, when they did the analysis on their part. Okay. So, and and what, what about the box on uh, the 9th Street outflow? This. This There's right a here? box up here at the top that you didn't identify a cost to. It's got a uh, yellow with a black X in it. On to the, the left. To, on the to your left. left. To right left. there, there Ed go. Carey. Okay, this is a separate project. Uh, the area we're looking oh, at. Oh, we're only talking yeah. about this one. This one's gotcha. already been done. Yeah, the, that, that, the third street, that's a third street drainage project, drainage ditch. That project was completed also through a grant uh, a few years ago. Got it, got it. Okay. So we're, we're, we're going to black, black that one out <laughs> instead of keeping it yellow. Okay. Uh, but I also want to thank uh, Alan Moore with the Danish District Number Five, and Tom McAmore with Irrigation District Number One, for agreeing to partner with us on this and moving these forward. Uh, matter of fact, Tom McAmore with Irrigation District Number One has agreed to start September 1st on 13th Street Drainage Ditch. Uh, now they still have to take these agreements to their respective boards for consideration, uh, but we would recommend the City Council approve the interlocal so that they can move on and present it to their board. I like the motion to approve. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the interlocal agreement. Is there a, on the 13th Street project, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those aye. opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Item six is consideration of possible action to approve a three-party interlocal agreement between the City of Harlem and Harlem Irrigation District Number One and Cameron County Drainage District Number Five to collaborate on <coughs> a project to improve the conveyance of stormwater along the Dixieland Drainage Ditch and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement. Mayor, Commissioners, once again, this is a very similar type of agreement with both the Irrigation District and Drainage District Number Five uh, to another project that's been identified in the Master Drainage Plan. Uh, this will provide a uh, drainage relief both to the adjacent properties along the uh, Dixieland Ditch, which we reference to or starts off of Dixieland Ro uh, Lincoln, just there uh, <coughs> south of the, uh, the shopping area, retail area. Uh, it heads south and it kind of meanders a little bit, uh, goes past uh, south of Garrett and then it turns uh, eventually to cross Dixieland Road uh, and then it discharges into the Arroyo Colorado. Uh, there's several uh, crossings that need to be upgraded. Unfortunately, the one on Dixieland Road does not, to be up, does not need to be upgraded. Uh, but the, the, the areas or the split where we've identified as far as maintenance, uh, responsibility and, and cost share have to do with the areas that we uh, I guess share or uh, split maintenance responsibilities with. Uh, the city maintains the canal south from Lincoln to the point where it crosses, or on the west point where it crosses Dixieland Road. From that point on it, to the outfall, it is a responsibility of the uh, uh, drainage <coughs> district number five. And so you'll see in your packet uh, a breakdown on the cost sharing proposal. 
Uh, again, we were seeing a very good price as far as the uh, the cost for excavation and, and hauling at two dollars a uh, cubic yard. Uh, with that said, the an improvement on the uh, drainage district side again. When you start these type of projects, uh, you want to start at the outfall point and make your way up north. Uh, in this case, or up upstream. Uh, and so the one box that falls under the uh, purview or responsibility of the drainage district would be uh, where it connects to this, what they call the text dot drain. Uh, <coughs> that, that box will be upgraded or that uh, existing pipe will be increased in size to a box. Uh, again, facilitating the outfall of the uh, stormwater that's coming up from uh, this basically this drainage area here. Uh, <coughs> The total cost for the drainage district uh, would be a one hundred fifty-two thousand three hundred and ninety dollars. The on the city side, which is a majority of the uh, project, uh, uh, the total cost is three hundred forty-two thousand one hundred and ninety-four dollars. In the the on um, from the six exhibit, you'll see that there's uh, three crossings. Uh, that are the responsibility of the city in this case the installation of an 8x6 box uh, the installation of a, a two 6x6 six six boxes at uh, Gomez uh, Road or and then a 8x6 uh, reinforced concrete box at Garrett Road uh, this point right here is, is mislabeled or misplaced it really should be down here this uh, is the up the upsizing of the box at the uh, textile drain. And so again, the uh, the cost for the uh, city share would be 342,194. Uh, the, through the, uh, <coughs> through the uh, TDEM grant or the uh, hazard mitigation grant program, our cost estimate, again, because it includes engineering and includes uh, a, a uh, uh, contractor's pricing and, and so forth uh, was at about three point two million dollars. So again, it's it's way uh, we're looking at about a ten percent <coughs> cost of the entire projected uh, uh, project at three point two million. Uh, staff's recommending uh, approval. Uh, and subject to the, the these agreements being ratified by both the drainage district and the And so once again, then the uh, drainage district, uh, this time number five, will absorb a roughly 33, 34 percent of the cost. That's correct. <clears throat> That's correct. Yes, sir. Right. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Yeah, and so this is going to affect a large area around the, in the Walmart. The retail area retail area also the neighborhood south uh, the residential area south of of that area it's a pretty pretty large area and should <coughs> positively impact uh, them again it's part of our master drainage plan and I think uh, again I think this is a great idea to partner uh, with the irrigation district and the drainage district any other uh, discussion all those in favor say aye aye as opposed like sign motion carries all right, item seven is a public hearing to solicit comments from the public for or against the adoption of the City of Arlington annual budget for fiscal year 2019-20. And Mayor, Commission, um, before I get going into the budget, I, I do want to point out that uh, after over 40 years of public service, <clears throat> Elvia Trevino, our finance director, where are you, Elvia? Ra <laughs> raise your hand. Uh, is leaving us and retiring after, and this will be her last, her final budget with the city of Harlingen. And I just want to say thank you, Elvia, for all your years of service. <laughs> you know, you're, you're an amazing employee. You're going to be very difficult to replace, and we, you've earned your retirement. So congratulations to you.
You sure you don't want to present this budget, Kelvin? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Um, this is a public hearing is required to hear comments for and, or against the city's proposed budget for fiscal year 2019-2020. Uh, the public hearing gives the citizens an opportunity to voice their comments uh, on the proposed budget. State law requires that the proposed budget be filed with the city secretary's office 30 days prior to the adoption of the budget for public inspection. We have already filed the proposed budget with the city secretary's office, as well as posted it online under the finance department. Um, I believe we're gonna start with a presentation before we open up the public hearing to update the commission due to the new grants that have been awarded. So I'm gonna go, in, go ahead and go into the, the budget presentation, Mayor and Commission. Um, I wanna point out that uh, this budget is different uh, to, from the budget that I was presented at the budget workshops to accommodate um, what the city council just approved with regards to the drainage grants. So I wanna make that clear before we get started. So proposed budget goals for next year, uh, 1.4 million to street maintenance, that's for street overlays. And I believe that uh, we have the list of streets that we're gonna overlay coming up uh, in another item. Public safety, where 1.6 million, uh, that, that includes some police vehicles, some salary increases for police, some fire equipment, and some uh, salary increases for fire and benefits. Uh, we're also going to increase our allocation to the Humane Society, who operates our animal shelter. Currently, they get 160,000. We're going to add another 127, increase the amount to $287,000 a year. Still a great bargain for them to operate our shelter for us. And then I went ahead and included the drainage improvement grant, a $1.7 million match for 9th and 13th Street, phase two, into the budget. And you stop me if you have any questions. So we're projecting a fund balance at the end of this year of 17.5 million. We do have some pending commitments. Uh, we have the land for the new bus terminal that we're acquiring, at estimated at $295,000. We hope to close on that within the next month. We have some improvements to the Jefferson drainage ditch Estimated at $300,000. We are working on those estimates and that spec right now. And you gentlemen just approved the 13th and Dixieland drainage ditch agreement. So we add those up and it's a 1037744 That will come out of the current year's budget, leaving us with an estimated fund balance of 16.4 million or 125 days. My personal comfort level, and I've said this before, is 120 days. So if we work off of the 16.4 million fund balance, we're projecting general fund revenues of 46.5 million and expenditures at 47.8. So we still have a shortfall of $1.378 million. Take that out of the fund balance. Then our fund balance drops to 15.1 million and 115 days of operation. So what do, what do we get our revenues from? We get our revenues up 40% from sales tax, 39%, I hope that's a nine, I don't have my glasses. 39% from property taxes. And, and this is, this budget that I'm presenting is inclusive of the four cent tax increase and I'll go over that in just a minute. Uh, you see the other breakdown, franchise fees, other finance sources for a total of 46.5. You can see the breakdown, we've gone over this before. So I want to point out uh, the property tax, the 2.3 increase, 600,000 of that is a one-time allocation from the debt service fund balance. And then $434,000 is from increased appraisals. So the balance is the tax increase that we're proposing. So we are proposing a 0 0.041173 increase that will help fund drainage improvements. And it's not 1.7 million, so that increase is 1.3. Uh, and we're projecting a 1% sales tax growth. And we also had to decrease about $127,000 uh, from the budget revenue projections because of Senate Bill 1152. So what does that tax increase mean for our residents? Uh, and I, we just put some home values up here. <coughs> On a $50,000 valued home, a property, it is about $20.59 per year in increase to the city. Uh, $100,000 value home, 
is $41.17 for the year, and a $150,000 home is $61.76 for the year. <clears throat> so when you break it down on the tax bill, 24%, uh, that is at the 63 cent tax rate, is the city's portion of the tax bill, 51% is the school district. Uh, you see the breakdown of Cameron County at 41 cent, drainage district number five at 13 cents, and so forth and so on. Just wanted to bring, show that breakdown of how the, the tax bill come, comes out to our, to our residents. And this is just a pie chart showing that breakdown. What are the city taxes fund? 54% is for public safety, 12% for public works, 9% for parks, recreation, other departments, including health department, building inspections, code enforcement, fall under this category in public buildings, 3% and 14% re respectively. Proposed expenditures, 69% is personnel cost of the city's budget, 4% supplies, services and charges, 17%, <coughs> capital outlay, 6%, and in transfers and incentives, 4%. Personnel services, of the personnel cost, 69% is public safety, with 31% for the remaining departments. And you see the breakdown there. 13.2 million for police, that's for personnel cost. 9.4 million for fire, $2 million for public works and so forth. For a total of $33 million. So I wanna thank the departments for working with me and, to coming, up, and coming up with this budget. Uh, so they submitted but departmental requests totaling $54.4 million. I was able to work with the departments and bring that down to 47.8 million. So we trimmed out $6.5 million out of departmental requests in order to present you the budget we're presenting tonight. That number was higher, but we added the capital outlay cost for the drainage grant. All that is already included. Comparison to last year, the budget increased $636,000. I do want to point out that the 47,885 and the $1.3 million up here in salary increases, nearly a million dollars of that is for fire and police alone, public safety. $985,000 to be exact. So what are the tax increases gonna fund? This is the projected revenue from the tax increase of four cents. Ninth and 13th Street drainage expenses, 1.6, $1.7 million. We are short 339,000. We propose to fund that from fund balance. I also wanna point out that we do have pending grant applications. We have the 21st Street drainage grant application, 5th and 7th, Jefferson and 13th, and Business 77 and 13th. These are all broad projects identified in the master drainage study. This is our match. If those estimates hold, and uh, if those estimates go up, that, that dollar amount goes up, so if we secure these grants, we would have an additional $2.5 million in expenditures that would need to come out of fund balance. And that, that would reduce our operating days to 91. So from fund balance, we are funding uh, one administrative unit for police, two criminal investigation units for police, and six patrol units. Fire suppression from fund balance, we're funding 12 new air packs for our firefighters, another power, battery powered rescue set for our fire trucks, 25 bunker gear sets. Uh, we'd like to get them a second set of gears, uh, bunker gear, and so um, we're buying a third a year for the next three years and hopefully we'll get them all in the, over the next three years. Class A uniforms, we also on public buildings, we need to, uh, address some issues with our AC controls at the Emergency Operations Center. At our police station, we need to replace two rooftop units. Our library, and this is very critical, we need to address some issues with controls for the elevators, that for the public, and then we need some repairs over at the Lancy Hill building. That is the $339,000 match that we need to make up that I touched on earlier right here for the drainage grant. 
Um, and then you see the parks department, a Z track mower, sidewalk, and then we have a, a truck for animal control uh, and a bucket truck for traffic signal. The traffic signal maintenance are the ones that take care of all the traffic signal lights throughout our city. And that is $1.3 million from fund balance. Golf course, uh, we're projecting a deficit uh, or expenditures over revenues of 204,000 and, and we're projecting a deficit in the fund balance of 970,000. The museum, we were able to balance their budget using fund balance. And the tennis court, we transfer 86,000 from the general fund to fund maintenance and operation. These are enterprise funds. Enterprise funds operate as a business. We're projecting 10.9 in revenues and 12.4 in expenditures. And we're gonna utilize 1.4 million in fund balance. Uh, the enterprise funds, uh, the auditorium, sanitation, solid waste collections, arts and entertainment, the uh, Arlington Heritage Museum, and the golf course. And that's where you see the projected losses for the golf course. Special revenue funds, this tennis court, hotel, motel, free trade bridge. We're projecting 9.4 in revenues, 9.8 in expenditures. We're gonna utilize $403,000 from fund balance. The $256,000 from the free trade bridge, that we're utilizing that from fund balance to buy a street sweeper. These are internal, internal service funds, our warehouse and our vehicle replacement fund, projecting revenues of 10.5, expenditures of 8.9. And so you see where we expect to have the, um, the fund balance at 4.4 for vehicle replacement. I do want to point out that the majority of the 3.1 million is from sanitation, <coughs> brush and debris, landfill, and recycling. So the proposed budget overall, we're proposing 77.5 million in revenues, 79.1 in expenditures and utilizing 1.6 from fund balance. General fund, once again, projecting 46.5 in revenues, 47.8 in expenditures and taking 1.378039 million out of fund balance, leaving us an expected fund balance of 15.1 million or 115 days of operations. And that is the budget we're proposing to the city commission. Again, we still have those pending grant applications and we hope to hear from TDM soon. If we do, we would have to come up with the matches from fund balance as well. I have a question. Okay. Can you go back to the slide that showed the uh, police and fire uh, salaries? <laughs> And so it's 13, right there, 13.2 and 9.4. Mm -hmm. How much do we raise without any other fund, just from property tax? The, the or, increased property valuations this year was 434,000. Right. Um, and are you, the 1%. Are you, are you talking about total revenue? Total revenue <laughs> at, derived from, from property tax. Oh, okay, total. Right, could, could you go to the revenue slide? <laughs> He went so fast I couldn't write it down. There we go. 17.9. Uh, 17? 17? Correct. Okay. So we're going to spend, uh, I, I think that slide that you showed is miss, because uh, uh, you, you said that if you go back to that slide, you had it labeled that that, right back, go back the other one, you just passed it. Where do my city funds go? Go back to that one. Right there. That, that slide is incorrect because you're including funds other than property tax in that fund. Yes. And I read an article today about what's going on in McAllen, and they made the statement, and we can say the same statement, that 100% of what we collect in property tax goes for public safety. Oh, absolutely. I just want to... More than. That's kind of... More, 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 than. More, than. more than. More than. More than. But they said 100%, we can say 100% of our property absolutely. tax goes to fund. I think that's the part that we need to sink in. Okay. Uh, so th this is the public hearing if you do want to move forward. Uh, okay. Is there any, anybody on the commission want to ask for a clarification on the, any part of the budget before we go to the public hearing? All right. Go to the public hearing and I'll open the public hearing. I'll ask you if you want to speak, please uh, come on up to the podium. Please state your name. Please state your residence address. You'll have two minutes. We'll need to strictly enforce that tonight, please. Uh, please help us with that, okay? 
Ron Lasano, 2410 Riverside Drive, Harlingen, Texas. This is the most time I've heard in two years that you spent on drainage, and uh, what a time. Because there's a ballyhoo about adequate reserves. What the populace of Harlingen wants y'all to wake up to is the rainy day that arrived on June 24th. And regardless of cosmetic grandstanding y'all have done lately, the real concern should not be Wall Street, but Harlingen and it's poor drainage, poor leadership that permits at least a $25 million debt on bonds for Bass Pro, one little company that had a very bad history and y'all knew about it. The DAs across the nation knew that they were bribing officials and y'all went ahead and gave them $90 million and that's quite a boondoggle. So that's why y'all are seeking to increase taxes because of your past errors. But they're the ones that are suffering. So within a 10 block radius of where we're at right now, you have a clay pipe infrastructure that Gunn has told you about often enough. That's going to be a tremendous cost for the core part of the city. The clay is at its end. So it will crumble. So the need can't be overlooked by saying we need to maintain a significant <coughs> reserve, no matter how often Dan cites it. The rainy day has arrived. That's what the reserve is termed. That's what y'all don't want to look at. Yes, we are weary of that leadership on basic needs that you don't like, but we're not tired. We're not tired unless, as usual, you turn a blind eye to this great need of the Harlingen citizens. Thank you. All right, next. next. I'm Susanna Thomas. I live at 1502 East Crockett. And my concern is the city has dreams. And the dreams have gone to Pro Bass Shop. It's gone to the convention center, the hotel, the future water park, parks. And while we're funding your dreams, our dreams are going bye-bye. OK? The, the downtown um, got reappraised. And I have a business in the downtown. I'm holding my breath to find out how much it's going to cost me to stay in business down there. My home keeps getting reappraised. I bought a 58 ranch in, uh, a 56 ranch in 91. It was valued at 58,000. It went to 82,000. Then it went to 86,000. And then all of a sudden, they decided it was going to be 149,000. And I couldn't figure out what I'd done to my ranch to make it so valuable. So we appealed. Okay, and I yelled at my sister for gardening too much. And we put too much paint on it. We made it look too nice. But we won our appeal because our house flooded. And all the sheetrock was gone, and the thing was all gutted inside. Well, it looked nice on the outside. The inside was a total wreck. And so we went back to, to 56,000, and then the next, or excuse me, 86,000. And then the next year, they raised it to 88,000 because they thought we'd completely recover. Well, the floor is still missing in the sewing room, and the floor, part of it's missing in the family room, but it's, it's coming back. And this year, they raised it back to 129000 Okay, and we appeal again. It seems like it's a constant battle just to keep your dreams and what you got. And the money that we're paying with this escalation every year of property values seems like we shouldn't have to pay four more cents per hundred dollars. Anyway, I'd like the city to consider our dreams Thank versus you. your dreams and try to get together to where we can all keep our dreams. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for or against uh, regarding the budget, the proposed budget? Uh, my name is Ruben Garcia. I'm fairly new in the uh, area. I've been here two years. I moved on the uh, west northwest side of uh, the city okay. in Mr. a Garcia, no flood would you give us your, your residence address, please? I'm sorry. Residence 8001, Washingtonia Court, Harlingen, Texas, 78552. Thank you. So uh, we moved here two years ago. Uh, they claimed there was a no flood zone. <coughs> of course, we got the flood of the century, whatever they said, a hundred year flood. And uh, I got affected. The good thing is that my, my house didn't get flooded, but everything else, property that I had in the back, uh, did. 
Um, my issue is, is not the tax, taxes because taxes is what we call the evil that we're going to have all the time, but it's needed. And I understand that. My, prop, my uh, problem is the accountability of that collection of taxes that is used properly. Uh, we have priorities, and I understand being uh, former law enforcement and military, I know that there are certain priorities that we're needed. Uh, and for our protection, we're going to need certain things that we need to purchase. The thing that, I, that bothers me is that in the area that I live, there's two courts with 12 new homes that were there the last two, two or three years that they built there. We have run into the problem that we have a road, Beckham Road, that every month there's holes in it. And every month somebody comes and throws a little bit of dirt on top of it to fix it. But it's the same thing. It's, nothing is being done. I was told when I first moved there that the drainage, that it was my responsibility. I take care of the drainage. I cleared the weed that was over six feet tall and maintain it. But the city doesn't take care of the vegetation at the intersection of the, uh, Frontage Road and Beckham. We have problems seeing cars coming from the left. And that happens every time the vegetation grows. They just cut it last week. I'm surprised that we haven't ran into a, a major accident because cars oh, come flying. So. Okay. But I ask you to wrap it up because your two minutes are uh, expired, please. Thank you. So, like I said, I appreciate everything you do, but let's have accountability with our taxes. All right. Thank you. Anybody else wants to come up with uh, and, and comment on the budget? Come on up. Just come on up to the podium. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Hello, uh, good evening uh, to everyone. Uh, my name is Bruno Hardin Cooper. Uh, the, the place where I live is Beckham Road, 25847 Beckham Road. I know that there is a project for repaving Beckham Road uh, that it was going to be for this year. Uh, engineer Martha from the city of Harlingen, she told me that uh, there was a street that it was going to be canceled for repaving and that there was a project for repaving uh, Beckham Road. Uh, there is a, as my neighbor said, uh, there is a big issue with the paving. There is a lot of holes, but the main issue is safety because we have uh, ditches, big ditches, and when you're trying to skip those holes, uh, there is people that they can go to the ditches. So that's the main thing that we have, and there is a very expensive houses there, and we don't have a good road. So uh, that's the main issue. Just uh, I would like to know, I, I, I was told that they were going to be talking about that repaving for Beckham for next month on September. I think uh, I have a neighbor that is the judge signs and uh, his wife, he told me that he wrote a mail to the city manager. Maybe it's Carlos Sanchez, the... It's item 16. Okay. It, it, it's on the agenda, item 16, okay. it's on the agenda. Okay, that's good, so, ah, that's very good. So, thank you very much, and I good just job. wanted to appoint it. I appreciate <laughs> so much, right. thank you. All right, thank you. Anyone, anyone else, anyone else? Hello, everyone. First off, my name is JV Garcia. Uh, first off, I, uh, I'd like to say I mean no your, disrespect. Your address. Your address. Oh, I'm sorry. 5718 uh, Wild Persimmon. Uh, first off, I'd like to say I mean no disrespect with what about I'm about to say, but conveniently, a public forum right now is being held for flood victims at Casa de Mistad, so I'm also going to be their voice since they're not here. I'd like to say the proposed four cent tax hike, I'd like to call the proposed four cent tax hike for what it really is, immoral. And if this city commission truly thinks it's right, while many of them aren't here, they're not be able to talk for themselves, they're suffering from the losses still from the June flood, then we really need to redefine who we are as a city. Obviously, I'm against this four cent tax hike, but I also want to help shed some light on this issue. 
so let's be clear. Senate Bill Number Two was just signed into law in, 20, in uh, June 2019, and it would require an election so we, the people, could decide on a tax hike. Here's the catch: the new law does not go into effect until January 1st, 2020. Am I right? All right. So TikTok, you all are trying to beat the clock. Yeah, folks, let's not be fooled. They're trying to beat the clock, so that way the new law doesn't kick in and it doesn't trigger an election where we get to make that call. So rather than using existing cash reserves for these expenditures, as Commissioner Puente pointed out in today's uh, paper, rather than attending a series of flood mitigation relief workshops to learn how to apply for drainage infrastructure grants and low interest rate loans, non-competitive, and which I've personally sent you all invitations and you all do not respond. Actually, there's gonna be one tomorrow at the Cameron Building if you all wanna go. Um, rather than simply prioritizing our city's most crucial needs, the city commission would rather burden the citizens of Harlingen with a property tax hike. I hope that this commission can become more transparent without being forced to be more transparent by the new law. It's ironic, the name of, this, of the new law is the Texas Property Tax Reform and Transparency thank, thank Act of 2019. Right. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. So thank you very thank much. You. I hope you all do all the right, right thing. Any, anyone else? Good afternoon, my name is Frank Lozano, 218 East Austin Avenue, Harlingen, Texas, right across the street from your red brick veneer house of Mr. Boswell, actually. Um, this tax hike, let's call it what it is, taxation is theft, and what you're trying to do is steal from us, the homeowners of Harlingen, Texas. I'm a first, I just bought my first home just last year here in Harlingen, Texas. Why? Because it's a great place to raise a family, and you guys are forgetting that concept. You're trying to build these, uh, attractions, the Bass Pro, the new um, convention center, which of course you know is an eyesore. I mean, compare it to McAllen, it's pathetic. I tried to bring a convention here. I tried to bring a convention here last year, uh, last uh, year when it just first opened. $35,000 is what the Libertarian Party was gonna expend. You know where they went? McAllen, Texas. They're gonna hold their state convention in 2020 in McAllen, Texas. That's revenue lost to the city. We know why, because you guys are focusing on the wrong thing. You're trying to steal from us, the homeowners of Texas, and it's gonna have electoral repercussions. I don't see your friend Yulhorn sitting here. I see our Mr. Puente sitting here. We voted, him, we voted him in. You know why we voted him in? Mr. Puente, I hope that you vote against this tax hike. We do not want to spend more money. We, we're trying to live in a community and raise good families, and we need that money to feed our children and to house our children properly. Thank you. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Anyone else? Come, come on up. Mayor, commissioners, my name is Elias Torres. I have been a resident of Harlingen except for my military service your ad, all my Mr. life. Mr. Torres, we need, your, we need your address, please. 1016 East Flynn Avenue. In what city? Harlingen. Okay. And I have lived here in my entire life except for my service in the military. All this that you have spoken about, I have been for it ever since I have been living in Harlingen. But as the lady pointed out, you, our dreams of, of wading out of, the, uh, out of the water came first with Bass Pro. And those millions that we Bass Pro could have paid for this entire project. Everything we've got here that you're presenting to us. None of that was uh, presented to us as to what or when we're going to get our money back so that we can do all these projects for the citizens of Harlington. I want the water out. I don't want fish from Bass Pro in, my, in our yards. Good. So th that's, that's all I ask. Okay. My tax uh, dollars go to the drainage, you. not to Bass Pro. I'll, Get it back. I'll, I'll simply point out that this is the general fund budget, not the Economic Development Corporation budget or the Community Improvement budget. So it's just, all tax money. It, it, it's di it's, it's different. all their money, no okay, matter where it comes from. I just point, point it out, point it out to you. Thank you, Mr. Torres. It Tordes. doesn't grow on trees. All right, anyone, anyone else? Anyone else? All right, 
hearing no one else, then I'll close. Okay, if you have, if you want to make a comment, come on up, Robert. You're not shy. We know you're not. Uh, Robert Lethwich, 909 East Parkwood, Harlingen, Texas. Uh, first, I wanted to just start off that you know back in the 2003, the city of Harlingen had a bond election, it presented capital improvement projects to the citizens for a referendum, and not all of them passed, and some of them didn't, and some of them did. And I'm, I'm suggesting that if you had done this with the convention center and some of these other projects, maybe the Ballinger building purchase that was $1.3 million that has a second city manager office, a second assistant city manager office, and I don't know how often you use it, Dan, but I know they're out there. The fact is that was $1.3 million of expense. You guys had to annex the property to even bring it into the city to be able to use it. Uh, the fact is, though, these things are preventable if you'll take them to the to the voters and let them vote on them. We know the convention center is going to be a deficit for the budget and perpetual, uh, you know, existence. You know, that's already a fact. You're 24 months or 36 months behind on the hotel. Nobody should have started on the convention center, broke ground on that until the hotel financing and that construction was in line with it. Right now, it's it's money losing more because it doesn't have the, the key component that was supposed to drive the profit or drive the business to the convention center. So that was that was mismanagement. Why the city did that, I don't know. Anyway, here we are. We're 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 looking for money. So I've got some recommendations for you. On the next on this same agenda this afternoon, we see that the the Harlingen EDC is going to refund to the community the the. EDC B board four hundred and ninety two thousand dollars as part of the sale of their office to the to TSTC and Rawdale's here and I know that money can go to the HCIB and that can be used for drainage the other thing is you're going to refinance the bonds I've read that it's going to save the city four hundred thousand dollars a year that could go back into the HCIB and that could be used to offset that $1.7 million that, that the city is going to take out of the fund. Okay. And I'll leave my, res my other comments okay. for the Thank next. You. Thank item. you very much. Anyone else? My name is uh, Raymond Reyes. I live on uh, 706 Nantucket Drive here in Harlingen, Texas. Uh, we've actually been here a very long time since 76 when we moved down from San Antonio and uh, I understand this is the budget part of the meeting and stuff but I didn't see any revenues from what Mr. Lethwich just uh, mentioned on the convention center that was built so I'm just wondering has anybody even approached the city to do any conventions there I did work for the Bronzeville Convention and Visitors Bureau for uh, 10 years. So uh, I was just kind of surprised when everything came forward about it actually being built, meaning that we really don't have, in my opinion, the ability to attract the kind of conventions that we need like McAllen and Bronzeville do, or even the island. So I was just noticing right now when the presentation was being done that there was no, there were other revenues given but no projection of revenues for that particular building. So that's all I have. All right, thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? All right. My name is Jessica Garcia. I live at 5718 Wild Persimmon. Uh, my commissioner is here, district number five. Uh, we elect our commissioners to do what's in the best interest of their people. And I don't think anyone, maybe I misheard, or if I didn't, please correct me, anyone come up here today and state they were for this tax increase. Your people are telling you, we don't want this. We can't do this. We can't afford this. We're recovering. And we want you to listen. That's what we voted you to do, was to vote on our behalf, because we can't. Mr. Boswell, you ran your campaign this year, when you got elected in May, on the idea that our city was financially sound. You said it in the Valley Morning Star when they asked you. And now you're wanting to increase our taxes? I don't understand how a city can be 
financially sound, and then just May, June, July, August, three months later, you're requesting to raise our taxes by four cents. So either you lied or something changed that we don't know about. But either way, it feels like you guys are not doing what your constituents are asking you to do. So I'm here today asking my commissioner of District 5, please vote no for the tax hike, because that's what I voted you in to do, was to speak on my behalf. All right, thank you very much. Is there, uh, anyone else? Last but not least, last time they told me to hurry up. Well, I take my time. My name is Yolanda Shawfit, 258 at the Spanmas Harlingen. We, or somebody, I didn't do it, voted you all in. But I'll tell you what, you're not looking out for us when you have $275,000 for a land on a bus, for another bus. Do we need another bus here in Harlingen? No. We need roads so we can get there. But Bass Pro was a wrong decision. And so was the convention center. Because I sat here when two men said that they needed $20,000 more because the signs were wrong and the lights were wrong at the convention center and it was unmarketable. In other words, you can't see it from the highway. Unmarketable. Did they get the 20? No because they had already done the budget and the budget didn't, they didn't have $20,000. Well, how can you build something that you cannot see? You cannot get there. It's, in, it's unmarketable. That's what's gonna bring down the city of Harlingen. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? All right, we're gonna close the public hearing and go to the next item, which is the first public hearing to solicit comments from the public for or against the proposed tax rate of 63 cents per $100 in value for fiscal year 2019-2000. Thank you, Mayor. The uh, tax rate being proposed is uh, 63 cents, um, which is included in the budget presentation. This would be the first tax rate increase in 14 years. The tax rate is factored in, like I said, in the 2019-2020 budget that was uh, presented earlier. Uh, the tax code requires uh, the city to hold two public hearings to adopt a tax rate that exceeds the effective tax rate. This is the first public hearing. A second public hearing will be scheduled for a regular city commission meeting on Wednesday, August 21st, 2019. After the public hearings, an ordinance adopting a tax rate will be drawn up and voted in two readings. The first reading will be scheduled for a regular city commission on September 4th, 2019. And the second reading will be scheduled for a regular city commission meeting on September 18th, 2019. Okay, I'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to comment on the tax, proposed tax rate? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you for okay, okay, okay. There's this old saying. You can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. Right? Now, when you say we don't have... Oh, Charles Bickley, 125 Arcadia Drive, Harlingen. Thank you. Okay. When you say we haven't had a tight uh, a tax hike in 14 years, whoa, must have been an election year that we got a sewer fee raise. Okay? And that also is above the 8% that you could have taxed us on. All right, now you got to go down with a uh, SB of two, all right? Listen, guys, all this propaganda you're putting out and telling us, oh, SB2 is going gonna, is gonna to cost us a lot of money, that claim is not substantiated. That's not at all true, okay? So when you, when you talk to people, try to tell them the truth and don't be disingenuous don't be disingenuous with the with the constituents here okay thank you all right anyone else like to speak for or against the tax rate yolanda shaw for 258 at the spalmas it's hard to say it but it's hard engine okay listen we're against any tax hike because 
we were flooded. So how can you give us something that we don't want or need or, well, it's not on our budget. We need to, we need to solve the problem that we have. Are we part of the problem? Or are we part of the solution? You are part of the problem, especially on the Ballinger building. I had to fight with the DA, and I would went to the FBI. You're going to be shocked to find out somebody's going to get indicted. Thank you. <laughs> All right, anyone, anyone else? Good evening. My name is Sue Groves. I live at 415 South K Street. And just for a minute, uh, I have a clarification I'd like to get. If you could go back to the slide, the one that has the street maintenance, the one, the, the table that had the street maintenance fee on it for a second. Please. Please. Can go you back. go back? Yeah, I'll go back. So it's a tax rate. Yeah. It it had it had the. Yeah. We're, this is the public hearing portion, and so you're. Well, free to, I, you're free to comment, and we'd like to hear your comment. Okay. The reason I ask that is because we're being charged property tax for street maintenance, but I don't see any reference to the 4.5 cents on the water bill that we see. Is that a hidden tax? on the water bill that was instituted in 2017. I don't see that reflected. So are we paying property tax for street maintenance and we're paying another street maintenance quote unquote fee every month on the water bill? I had just hope you guys could put the table back up so we could get some clarification and specify. And now you're asking for a 63 cent increase when all these people that got flooded are still trying to put their homes back together. I just don't think that's right. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any, anyone else? It's still same name, same address. This situation of this enterprise funds, that means that they can make money. They're not all losing propositions like the golf course. So the sanitation department was the money maker of the four that you cited. And of course, they transfer money back to the general fund. So there is a lot of shell games going on. And you talk about drinking Kool-Aid. Look, look what your staffer said. So unbecoming. It's been 14 years. That's not appropriate for a staffer to suggest when the last day of reckoning was. That's not their function. So that's what we're fed up with. Y'all believe some of the tripe that y'all put out to us. We have endured three 500-year floods in the last 20 years, less than 20 years, okay? So those acts of nature, maybe God is trying to tell y'all something. Y'all need to start paying attention to basic needs, not the frills. If you guys really believe in sound management, please do not raise this money on a populace that's hurting. Most of you all are in positions of being oblivious to whatever we say. And that's tragic. It is up to these people to get you all out if you're not going to start listening. So hopefully, you all start listening. Thank you. All right. So anyone else like to com anyone else like to comment on the tax rate? Come on, come on up. Elias Torres. 1016 East Flynn, Harlingen, Texas. Okay, it's still you. in the USA. <laughs> As a taxpayer of Harlingen, I do not wish to ever provide welfare <clears throat> to multi-million dollar corporations at all. I want my money to go to my streets and their streets and our sewers our fire departments, our police departments. Get our money back from these welfare leeches that you have been bringing into Harlingen and you won't need a tax hike for anything. Is there anyone, is there anyone else? Anyone else like to comment on the tax rate? Come on up, state your name and your, give us your address. 
My name is Enrique Bundes. I live at 502 West Lincoln, but I stay at my shop. Okay? I live at 502 West Lincoln. My house is at 502 West Lincoln, but I sleep at my shop because I care about my shop. Okay? I have an air mattress, and I stay there at night as the doors open. Who would do this? Someone who cares about my shop. Mr. Puente sees me every day drive by because I hit, see him drive by every day. Okay? I didn't really have a talking point today because I needed to listen to what everybody had to say. And it seems like everybody's in agreement that we don't want the tax hike. Okay? So, having said that, let me re preface this with be careful, people, what you say to the mayor because he will threaten you. I do have a recording of him threatening me. If I went national, with the issues that are going on with the police, Mr. Kester's in the back, and he's hung up on me. Okay, you need to address the commission. You need to address the commission. I have gone him, to Mr. Kester, uh, and he's got issues. The ranger is here, so he knows if he has any questions, or the FBI, that you have threatened my business. Okay? So be careful, people. If you go against the mayor, he will threaten you, but you have to record him. So having said that, we don't want the tax hike. And if you, you were to run a business, if you understand how to run a business, you'd understand that when there's monies available, there's also audibles available. If you see something isn't working, then don't use that money. Use it for things that you need to do, like I do. Sometimes, I don't have to take a vacation. I use it for other equipment that I need to use. But that's because it matters to me. I run my business. We're a multi-million dollar company. We're a city. We need to start running like that and not like a fat cat. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else like to comment on the tax rate? Hello, uh, City Commission. J.V. Garcia again here. Uh, 5718 Wild Persimmon in Harlingen. Uh, I just kind of want to, I was a little confused. I thought earlier I was speaking on the tax hike. I think a lot of us were a little confused about that. So I just want to copy and paste everything that was said from the public hearings on uh, item number seven and copy and paste them to item number eight. Done. And thank you. <laughs> and uh, now I don't have to be reading and I'm a little loose so I can kind of look you all in the eyes this time and I don't have two minutes to worry about so I can just stand here and I don't know, just waste your time because that's what you do to us. So uh, I got another one minute and 23 seconds, 22, 21, 20. But listen, seriously, I think you guys should have gotten the hint. It's simple. It's simple for those of you looking down, not trying to make eye contact with you and ignore, ignoring my emails where I'm telling you I can get you millions of dollars and help you fill out the applications to get funding for drainage infrastructure other than the two funding sources that they're talking about. I'm talking about five other different federal funding sources and state sources. It's simple, guys. I've done it before. I have. So please respond to my emails. Tomorrow at, the, uh, at uh, the county building in San Benito, there's going to be a meeting where GLO is going to be there, Texas Water Development Board is going to be there, Army Corps of Engineers is going to be there, FEMA is going to be there. And guess who's going? All the surrounding counties and the cities except Harlingen. I haven't seen any invites or anybody on the list from Harlingen. I, I really hope to see somebody there. It's free. They're going to guide your hand. They're going to teach you how to get the money for real drainage infrastructure. Simple. It's very simple. Right now on this vote with this tax hike, do the right thing. If it seems like in your mind and in your soul that it's wrong, it probably is. Please vote no on this. My commissioner, please vote no on this in District 5. I won't mention your name because you have a problem with that, you've told me. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Is there any, any, anyone else would like to comment on the tax rate? Frank Lozano, 218 East Austin Avenue, Harlingen, Texas, still across the street from me, Mr. Boswell. Um, I said it before and I'll say it again, I'll say it till I'm red in the face, taxation is theft. What about a novel idea? Why don't you propose a tax, lower the taxes? That'd be nice. Never done that before, at least not that I know of. Actually, Maybe you, yeah. this hammer and sickle thing you got for your logo here is uh, showing you that you're all communists over here. Look, we. We pay a lot of money for our homes. We pay a lot of money to maintain our homes. We don't need another four cents on the dollar. Maybe it's not a lot to you, 
maybe four cents on the dollar is nothing. It's just the change you throw throw at us for every time you want to uh, get reelected. Put the put your big face everywhere on the billboards. Not very pretty sight. But we do um, agree with that. Well, you can disagree all you want, but the uh, the the fact of the matter is is that. We all could be spending time here with our kids tonight. We all could be spending time here with our families. But we all came out here to show, tell you all that we don't want this tax hike. We don't want to pay more in taxes. Taxation is theft. And if you can't understand that, then we'll vote people in that do understand that. Okay? I mean, I'm going to be living here until probably I die. And so I'm going to be voting every single election. And I'm going to be voting against people who try to raise taxes on us. Thank you. Anyone? You heard from one of us, so you might as well hear from both of us. This is Pat Thomas, 1502 East Crockett, Harlingen, Texas. I think we're winding down, and I'd like us to end on a bit of a positive note. We've got to work together in this city. I know you've got to run it, you've got to spend money, but you've got to be reasonable. I've got to have enough left to um, go buy bro groceries, cat food, and feed the dogs, pay the air conditioning bill, try to run a business, and not be in terror of what's going to happen to my checkbook and my dreams. So as you vote and as you make decisions, I want you to weigh what's in everybody's best interest. Old people on fixed incomes, people that work for minimum wage. There's lots of people in this city that are struggling. Houses all messed up. We broke a pipe a couple of years ago. It was a nightmare. So when it flooded, I cringe because I understand what it is to pack up your whole crazy house with water everywhere and they had black water, not clean water. Um, and you're tired and you have a tendency to get mean and there's no end in sight. We need to, be, we need to work together. But you've got to be fair and we've got to be fair. But the taxes, they just can't keep coming. At some point, you got to work within your budget. I have to work within mine. I'm retired. It is, I'm not going to see a big pay increase. So I have to live between now and the end with what I make, and it's fixed. See if we can figure out how to fix this whole mess a little bit better. Thank you. All right, thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone else like to make a comment on the tax rate? <laughs> Robert Lethwich, 909 East Parkwood, Harlingen, Texas. Uh, first, I have a question, Dan, for you. Uh, what is the percentage of tax collection that your your revenue on the property tax, what is it based on? 97, 98, 96 percent collection? The staff can answer questions afterwards. Okay, uh, that's my question. Can, Sergio will be, be available <laughs> and you can, he'll answer that question after the meeting. Okay. Because that does have a, an effect on how much revenue you're going to get. Uh, the second thing is I want to reiterate, I'm serious, uh, with all due respect, we really need to start looking at the Economic Development Corporation B money to pay for some of this drainage. We, you know, we do a lot of things with that money. It's eligible. And there's, I know there's $400,000 going to be kicked back to them today on another agenda item. You've got uh, in the paper, you had $400,000 savings in refinancing the bonds for Bass Pro. That money needs to be considered. And, and last but not least, I just want to challenge the legality of this hearing because I did not see the formal tax numbers that included, and this is for the city attorney. This, there's not a posting that shows the effective tax rate or the rollback tax rate. I don't have that information. I don't see it anywhere. It's not posted downstairs with the meeting agenda, and it's not posted on the on the city's website. So I'm declaring this meeting unlawful. All right. Any, anyone, anyone else? Hey, y'all. I'm Christina Gaeta, 1706 Karis Court, Harlingen, Texas. Hi, Mr. Ribe, I'm your neighbor. Remember me? I called you and texted you, but you never responded. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna be nice. I wanna say um, I'm really happy that I came today and that you guys are actually gonna be working on the drains. Um, as I stated before, I've been to a couple of these um, city gatherings now and 
Hardigen's growing. I think that you guys are a little bit behind on that. And I mean, we're happy to grow, but we need the infrastructure to support that growth. And number one is the, the flooding, the drains. Um, so it's really great that you guys are working on that today. Um, it's something that still needs more work. I noticed right after the flood that they're putting in storm sewer drains over there by the, um, by the convention center and by Bass Pro Shops. But then the residential areas where we have our citizens, there's no work being done yet. So I'm really, really hoping that y'all start on this soon because my neighborhood has been flooding over the past two years. As they're building, everywhere that they're building, that's where they're flooding. I've noticed this pattern. Uh, Stewart Place, they built um, the cheddars and stuff. It's flooding. My area behind me, they started building new houses. We started flooding. So I, I mean, if you see it, it's, it's happening. So I just want to say that just keep that in mind that we really want to focus on that infrastructure so that we can support the growth. I'm not against any of that. I know that's probably not a popular opinion, but as far as the taxes go, I, was, I said before, I'd be happy to pay more in taxes, but not as a homeowner's tax. It should be more of a, prop, uh, a tax for goods, like for a sales tax, something like that. I like shopping. If I'm going to be spending money, all the visitors, winter Texans, people that come here from out of town, uh, tax them on cigarettes, alcohol, shopping, stuff like that, but not on our homes, because there's not a lot of homeowners, and we're already suffering because we've been flooded. I've been flooded twice in, the, in less than a year. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, guys. Okay. Anyone else would like to comment on the tax rate? Anyone else would like to comment on the tax rate? Uh, good evening, Commission. Uh, my name is Francisco Medrano, Jr., resident at 1217 Court Place, Harningen, Texas, 78550. Uh, I just want to reiterate that uh, nobody here in the public has, uh, you know, is for the tax hike. Or anything like that I know I'm leasing my house right now I just pay sales tax and whatnot I don't unfortunately uh, my education costs me a lot of money so I can't uh, get a mortgage but that's another issue don't worry about that uh, <laughs> but um yeah I just want to reiterate and force that that a uh, uh, quote that I just heard right now I mean you can't always make the right choices but you can make your choice right so I mean if they're telling you that they don't want it Please listen. Okay. Anyone else, anyone else like to comment on the tax rate? All right. Then we'll close the public hearing on the t on the tax. Uh, this is there. There's no decision tonight. No vote. This is just a public hearing to solicit comments from the public for or against the proposed tax rate and the budget. Now, item nine is the consideration of possible action on approving a reimbursement resolution expressing official intent to reimburse cost of drainage improvements from obligations to be issued by the city of Harlingen. Mayor, members of the city commission, uh, the city is contemplating issuing debt for drainage improvements, uh, an amount not to exceed $4.7 million. Uh, now, this resolution tonight is not uh, an issuance of that debt, and it does not bind the city of the future to issue that debt at all. This is merely a resolution stating that if we spend any money on any of those projects now, that should the city decide to issue that, that debt later, we can reimburse ourselves for any expenses that we've had. So it's only a, a reimbursement resolution, not an intent to issue debt. So with that in mind, staff is recommending approval of the uh, resolution. Okay, is, any, anybody have any questions? Yeah, about well, this? Uh, this. We're not sure we're gonna do this. We don't know I'm sorry, how do you hear? Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, would you explain this again? Where right. this is to so get reimbursed from from where so and it, what to what? So I, I've been working with our financial advisor in an effort to try to determine if we have any bonding capacity for drainage improvements. Part of the process is a reimbursement resolution because if we start spending money on drainage, if we're able to issue bonds down the road, we could potentially reimburse part if we want or continue to do more projects. This is a form that's required or a process that's required for that. Um, I will tell you that I got an email from the financial advisor today and it does not appear that we have the capacity to issue bonds, but we would like to move forward with a reimbursement resolution in the event that changes. She continues to study that and see there's a possibility. 
So all this really does is give you permission to do exploratory, right? To, to explore the possibilities whether we could <coughs> issue bonds in the future and because we have this resolution at hand and we've already decided to spend this money, we can come back and recapture it? Is that the way I'm reading yes, that? Yes, yes. Yes? <laughs> so if, if, if we're able to determine if we can issue bonds and we get those other drainage grants we talked about and we start going to the <laughs> 91 or 90 days of reserve, which is a concern, um, then possibly we can reimburse some of that money from these bonds. You cannot do that unless you have a reimbursement resolution in place. Again, this is not to issue debt. This is not to do anything other than to have a document on file that allows us to reimburse ourselves for some of these costs. Um, we are still working on it. It does not look favorable, but we still want to move forward with the document. And this does not bind us in the future to issue any debt at all. Yeah, I understand that. I just want to make sure that I'm, the way I read it, because I you know, read through the packet and then I, I saw this in the order that we had it, and so we've already approved monies. So if if at some point in the future, I don't know how long in the future that is, but this tells our financing people that, that yes, we would be interested in that way they can pursue it. And, and she's looking at it now. Uh, this basically sets up a mechanism by which if we issue bonds and we start depleting our fund balance down where, where it draws a concern that we could potentially reimburse ourselves from the issuance of bonds for drainage improvements. Um, this is a, just a mechanism that's in place that we have to have in place and if we want to move forward. Uh, again, in my discussions with her and the email today, it does not look favorable, but we still like, I still like to have that in place, just, just in case. Exploring, the, exploring is, is, would there be, an, is there any room to, uh, uh, without raising the INS tax rate, uh, is there any room? Correct. Apparently, it doesn't look like there is, but she's still looking at maybe some ways to do it without, uh, it would still be, a, you'd still have to approve the borrowing. Nobody's, no, this is just in case, in case that were to happen. We, we would still under, undertake the entire process of issuing any debt if we did go that route. Okay. This is simply the reimbursement resolution so that we can have that mechanism in place. Uh, okay. And staff are recommending approval. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion here. Thank you. Carries. All right. Uh, item 10 consideration of possible action to adopt a resolution approving the one year action plan for fiscal year 2019 20, year 45, the community development block grant CWG program, and fiscal year 2019 20, year 25. <coughs> On the Home Investment Partnership Program. Good Tammy. evening. Um, on June 24th, you all had a special meeting to approve the budget for the CDBG and the Home Program uh, and the amount of $1.249 million. Uh, we had to have a 30 day comment period. We've had that. What this is resolution is approving that budget and then we'll present it to HUD by the honor before the 15th day of August. And staff recommends uh, <coughs> approval of the resolution. So moved. Second. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item 11. Consideration possible action to award a loan using community development block grant funds to provide for the home reconstruction for Mr. Ranulfo <coughs> Ramirez and Mrs. Elizabeth Ramirez for their home located at 1126 North Sunset Drive. Tammy. We um, had an applicant, Mr. and Mrs. Ramirez, for the housing rehab program. The amount of repairs needed to bring the home up to standard exceeded the $25,000. So they were then um, referred to the reconstruction program. We'll go in, we will demolish their home and build a new home on the property. Uh, we received bids, we sent it out to, we have about at least 100 contractors on our list. Um, so we sent it out, we received um, several bids back and the lowest bid to include the demolition for the construction of the two bedroom, two bath home that is brick will be $62,000 to board of construction and staff recommends approval of that bid. So moved. Second. <coughs> Second. Any other discussion? All those favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign, the motion carries on. Congratulations. 13. Consideration possible action to adopt a resolution finding that AEP <coughs> Texas Inc's requested an increase nope. to its electric. No, 12, Mayor. Hmm? 12? 12. 12. 12. Sorry. Consideration possible action to adopt an ordinance approving a negotiated resolution between the City of Arlington and Texas Grass Service regarding the company's April 30th, 2019 
cost of service adjustment filing, declaring existing rates to be unreasonable, adopting new tariffs that reflect rate adjustments consistent with the negotiated settlement, and providing for the recovery of the city's reasonable and necessary rate case expense. Um, Mayor, members of the commission, on April 30th, Texas Gas Service filed a, a COSA with an intent to raise their, their rates. Uh, initially, they had uh, submitted a rate of $2.1 million uh, system-wide. Uh, the city hired uh, uh, Thomas Burkhardt, a uh, consultant, uh, Carl uh, Nalipa, to negotiate the uh, rates with <coughs> Texas Gas Service. They were actually able to redu reduce that amount by $73,000. <coughs> so staff is recommending approval of the ordinance. We'll Anybody open. have any questions about this? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. moved. <laughs> Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. All right. Uh, now, item 13, consideration possible action to adopt a resolution finding that AEP Texas Inc.'s requested increase to its electric transmission and distribution rates and charges within the city should be denied. Finding the city's reasonable rate case expenses should be reimbursed by the company. Uh, this is a similar case, uh, only with AEP. Uh, AEP filed uh, uh, on April, on May 1st, 2019, uh, an intent to uh, change the distribution and transmission rates. Uh, customers in our region would be impacted by a $4.75 increase per month. Um, we did hire again uh, Thomas Brocato, uh, who was negotiating with the company. Uh, they were not able to reach a settlement amount, so they are recommending that we adopt the resolution uh, denying the rate increase. Uh, what will happen at this point is that AEP will go before the PUC probably later this month and ask and, uh, and provide their, their uh, information to the uh, PUC. Our attorneys will also provide the information that we've been, been able to gather. Uh, the PUC will make a determination probably between September and October of this year. We'll be notified about what that rate may be and whatever rate they decide will go into effect December 20th, 2019. So we're asking that you adopt the resolution denying uh, their, their rate increase. And when the PUC does this, it can't go any higher than they've already asked for, is that correct? Uh, no, once the PUC makes a decision, that's, that's final. Okay, any, question, any other questions? Is there a motion to approve the resolution? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign, motion carries. Item 14, consideration possible action to approve a request from the city of Hidalgo to enter into a sale and purchase agreement of brush collection equipment, declare the equipment as surplus property, and authorize the city manager to execute the agreement and any other related documents. Uh, Mayor, commissioners, good afternoon again. Uh, annually, the city of Harlingen uh, replaces equipment. Uh, through the auction process. Uh, and again, this is equipment that's either been, uh, well, it's been depreciated, uh, pretty much uh, gone through the life expectancy, uh, has a significant amount of uh, cost to uh, keep operating and maintaining. And so uh, there's two items that we were identified this year in, in, in conjunction with a site visit that the city of Vidal would make uh, to our, our uh, Public Works uh, Yard, they've identified two items that they have requested uh, an agreement with the city, uh, uh, city Harlingen for a transfer of, of sale, uh, of ownership. And the uh, first item is a 2007 Ford uh, hydraulic uh, stand-up brush truck. Um, <coughs> this is uh, practically like an open top uh, brush truck that has a, a grapple arm on it. <coughs> the other one is a case loader, 2009, can both uh, items are useful for the operation of uh, servicing a brush collection. Uh, both items are more than uh, 10 years also in, uh, in age. So uh, staff's uh, uh, recommending approval of the sale, uh, the first item at for $5,600 uh, for the uh, stand-up brush truck and $4,800 for the case loader, uh, grapple loader. And the city of Hidalgo has agreed upon these prices? Uh, yes, sir, they have. And they understand that they're sold as is, uh, no warranties. Okay. And right. we were going to dispose of them, is that correct? Yes, they were getting ready for auction. Oh, we're getting ready to auction them off. Yes, sir. Okay. Didn't they just buy a, 
or was that another city that bought that incinerator? For us? That was the city of uh, Mission. Mission. So we're starting to allow, we're helping the other cities in our areas by doing these. That's correct. Okay, is there a motion to approve the uh, uh, sale and purchase agreement? So moved. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. The motion carries. <laughs> Item 15, consideration of possible action approval request from the city of Primetta to enter into the sale and purchase agreement of brush collection equipment and authorize the city manager to prepare and execute all necessary documents. Uh, Mayor, Commissioner, similarly, this is another item that uh, was uh, slated for disposal of uh, through uh, an auction process. <coughs> Uh, the city of uh, Primera has an urgent need to uh, meet their needs as far as the brush collection uh, as a result of the uh, storm that we uh, saw uh, back in June. The, uh, they have approached us similarly to the city of, uh, of, of Hidalgo and have uh, expressed interest in this piece of equipment. It's a freight liner, Nalco Boom, 2010 freight liner. And the uh, agreed uh, to or proposed price for the sale is uh, five thousand uh, dollars. Staffs recommending approval. And once again, same question. So, Primaris agreed to this price. Yes, sir. They have. And no warranty. No warranty. <laughs> sold assets. Motion for approval. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 I like this. Uh, I'm really happy that we can. You know, no. help prevent that out this way. I think it's a good thing. They they've been hit. They were hit pretty hard too. All right. Item uh, 16 is the consideration of possible action to amend the list of streets for the 2018-19 street improvement program to exclude Hain Street and add Beckham Road to the 2018-19 list. Uh, Mayor, commissioners. Uh on an annual basis, also the uh, streets that are identified for repaving, reconstruction through the uh, street paving program, which is the uh, the uh, street maintenance fee that's collected on a monthly basis. Uh, the street is uh, is identified by staff, brought to the city commission for approval. Currently, we are undertaking the construction or the improvements of the 20 fiscal year 2018-2019 uh, program. Uh, in that uh, list of, of streets that was uh, approved by City Commission last year, August 15, 2018, the road, uh, Hain Road from the limits of uh, Ed Carey to um, just blanked on, to Carver, Carver Road, Carver Road. Uh, was slated to be uh, overlaid this year. Uh, in coordinating with the Harlingen Waterworks, we have identified that there's a conflict in that they have a pipe bursting project, meaning that they're going to go in there, tear up the road uh, soon after we repave this, this road. So we want to avoid that, that uh, conflict, that situation. They have tried to work or expedite their job uh, before us, but unfortunately they haven't been able to get a, a a bid package together that would uh, work within their means because we're trying to expedite the project. Uh, and so they have requested and we are in, in rec uh, at a point where we want to recommend that the list that was approved last year be amended. Now we identified another road and the road is Beckham Road from, uh, from uh, Frontage Road to <coughs> Business 83. And the reason we identified this road is that it's, from a cost-wise uh, uh, standpoint, it's almost identical, meaning that we're not increasing uh, the contract price for the contractor that we currently have on board. Uh, and so uh, the list and this item comes next uh, that's been identified for next year has Beckham Road in that, in that program. So in essence, what we're doing is just swapping uh, Hain for Beckham Road and just swapping the years. So we, we already bid out the, the, the list of streets to be overlaid for this current fiscal year. That includes Hain. Waterworks is in the process of doing a, a construction project that once we pave it, a few months after they're going to tear it up. So we propose to take that street off and add Beckham, which is similar size. We've met with a contractor. He's willing to swap the streets out. Um, 
at the at the contract price. And so staff is recommending that we do that and bring Hain back on the next item for out, so we can go out for bids next fiscal year. And, and is that the section of road that these two gentlemen that came before us were referring he, he's to? Si he's I sitting believe. right there. So, yeah. It is? Yeah. Yes? Is, okay. is this a benefit uh, time-wise as far as it's gonna, is it also going to save time in the construction and completion? Well, yes. It, it, well, the, the, the other benefit to not doing Hain right now is because of there's conflict with the, uh, the school system. Or the school's about to start, right. Uh, right. Pressure right. Hills. Yeah, and yeah so you want to we'll make program. that a, uh, we did that a summer project. You, you want yeah. to see, see, right. yeah. see trouble, they've already started the shutdown uh, mid lane, mid -lane yeah. coming off the freeway. I can just imagine what it's going to be like going to south. And, and, and to that point, is there a timeline that they have to get finished or be completed by? Uh, yes, sir, there is. Uh, the existing project timeline. Uh, is the end of September, second week in October. I, uh, just going off of memory at this point. But Question on Hain. UTRGV Medical School is going to make a big structure there with heavy steel. Uh, will that structure be already commenced when Hain is finally repaved? Uh, because that's something there, cause there's the risk that heavy equipment and heavy steel <coughs> Yes. Dry, it will tear up the road. Certainly, we, we can coordinate with that, reach out to them. Uh, and this, again, in the next list, uh, Treasure Hills has also uh, been identified. Project's supposed to start in 2020. <coughs> so, so, yeah, well, so, that's, so, a good, that's, that's a good, a good point. point. That's a good thing. That's a good consideration. We should, yeah, yeah. We should yeah, think I, about I, it. I don't we, enjoy we, paving the roads. I have them torn we, up. We may, be able to, we may be able to coordinate with them and have them use Hay Wayland Road and come back in from the east. We would hope. And uh, we we can work with them. Car Carlos Carlos will definitely meet with them. Sure. Good good point. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's go on. Uh, so, is there a motion to approve that change? So let's let's so move. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item 17. Consideration of possible action to approve the proposed list of streets for 2019 to 20 street improvement program. Mayor, Commissioners, uh, before you is the list for the next uh, fiscal year uh, 1920. Again, this is part of the uh, budget that's been presented to you previously and is funded by the street maintenance fee that's, uh, that's collected on a monthly basis. Uh, we have identified the project list of uh, roads with the uh, pain taking the place or substituting Beckham Road. Uh, the um, estimated amount at this point is a little bit over 1.4 million, uh, and again, this is an estimate. It's it's we'll work with the uh, bid documents to specify or, or make sure that we fall within the 1.4 million dollar uh, budget. So you're going to be doing two at the same intersection, Treasure Hills and Hay. That is correct. Right? Yes. Sir. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the list of streets? So moved. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign, motion carries. Is that is that the last Caliche Road we have in District 5? Tracks are away. Tracks are away? Yes. Or do we have one more? I believe that's, yeah, because Hick Hill is not, uh, no. That's okay. not city limits. So. Yeah. Thank you. Item 18, consideration of possible action to approve a resolution accepting the disbursement of funds from the Harlingen Economic Development Corporation in HEDC to the Harlingen Community Improvement Board, HCIB, in the amount of $492,500 as part of the gain on the sale of University Articulation and Career Center to Texas State Technical College, recognizing HCIB's financial contribution to the University Articulation and Career Center. Rodell? Raudel wants to give the 4B some money. And, uh. Mayor, City Commissioners, <laughs> um, we talked about this at the budget amendment uh, last month, um, but what we failed to do was actually get authorization from you all to actually do this. Um, so um, per our bylaws, we have to make sure that City Commission approves the disbursement. Um, when we sold our interest in the building, we sold our interest for $4.4 .4 million, which included $492,500 worth of consideration for the contribution that was made by the 4B Corporation, HCIB, 
uh, back eight years ago. And so uh, this resolution just authorizes us to make that exchange. Yep. Yep. Okay. Sure. Approved. <laughs> Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. <coughs> Motion carries. Thank you, Rodell. Item 19 uh, board appointments. I have a, a reappointment of Daniel Lopez to the um, Community Development Advisory Board. I have a uh, Chris Sias to be appointed to the Construction Board of Adjustments. And Myra Al Sanjade. None. None. Right, so motion to approve board appointments. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item 20 is an executive closed session on the following items. A, pursuant to section 551.0712 and point, in fact, section 551.072 of the Texas Government Code to seek legal and receive legal advice pertaining to the city's legal options and discuss the exchange of real property regarding the implementation of Project Dream and D to discuss the exchange of real property regarding the implementation of Project Development and C pertaining to certain provisions contained within the City of Parliament Convention Center Project Agreement and D to receive legal advice regarding potential joint CBG agreement with Cameron County and E to receive legal advice pertaining to negotiations regarding the Cameron County Emergency Services District Agreement and the F attorney client consultation to seek legal advice as to the city's legal duties, rights, and obligations regarding fire department bunker gear claim. Is there a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the City Commission is going to meet with the attorneys in closed session. And uh, there could be action on uh, items related to these executive session items when we come out of executive session. We are out of executive session at 8.17. And we're going to go to... Item 21, consideration of possible action to authorize the city manager to negotiate the exchange of property along Tennessee Street with UTRGV. Mayor, Commission, staff is recommending that uh, we uh, exchange property with the EDC, property from Project Dream with the EDC for project uh, property related to project development as discussed in executive session. So moved. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 I believe item, uh, the action taken on 21 takes care of 22, and there is no other action to, uh, to take on any of the other items at this time. So we'll go to item, we'll go to 27, citizen communication. Done. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>